Clack and Wet Beaver Creek. Some nice water down there below, so gonna jump in. <laughs> yeah, it's quite cold. <laughs> So I found my spot to paint. As you can see, the rock behind me, people are jumping off and diving in. So I may paint a few people into the scene. I'm excited to start painting here. This is my last day here in America. Uh, remember, please subscribe and let's start painting. I'm painting on a gesso primed panel that I've toned to a neutral gray. I'm using thin down raw umber paint to sketch in the main lines of the composition and to shade in the shadow shapes to help me get a quick impression of the overall scene onto my panel. I find it helpful to distinguish the shadow shapes early on in the painting for a few reasons. Firstly, by identifying the shadows and the character of the shapes that they make, I can use them as a tool to reference and draw the proportions of the scene accurately. Also, it reminds me to paint the shadows and the lights with separate and distinct paint mixes and avoid having to try and paint a shadow over the top of a light section of paint, which can be really difficult to do when painting wet into wet paint, as the colors will mix and the shadow will lose its impact. I'm now painting the sky using a color mix of cerulean blue, titanium white, and a touch of ultramarine blue. Using a color mix of ultramarine blue, and raw umber. I paint the darkest sections of shadows within the trees above the rocks. I'm now painting the sections of trees which are catching the sunlight. I'm using a color mix of yellow ochre, ultramarine blue, and a touch of cadmium red and titanium white, as these sections which are catching the sunlight are gonna be warmer than the sections in shadow, as the sun is a warm light source. Here I'm painting the sections of rocks that are in light using a color mix of yellow ochre, cadmium red, raw umber, and titanium white. To paint the shadows I use a color mix of raw umber, ultramarine blue, some cadmium red. I'm applying the paint thinly by dipping my paintbrush into my medium, which is just turpentine. I also add some yellow ochre to the shadow mix for areas of the shadows which are receiving more reflected light from the water or the surrounding rocks. I'm now refining the transitional edges between the lights and the shadows. This is important in capturing the form of the rocks, as well as determining the nature of the shadow, as to whether it's a form shadow or a cast shadow. To paint the reflection in the water, I start by painting the darkest sections which reflect in the shadows within the rocks. I'm now masking in the light sections of the reflection with the general color and tonal value for the whole section. I can then work back into this with some lighter highlights and dark accents for the ripples in the water.
Here I'm painting some of the reflections of the blue sky into the water. This blue contrasts against the warm yellows and reds in the reflection of the rocks. As these colours sit on opposite sides of the colour wheel, they're considered complementary colours, and when placed side by side, they make each colour appear more vibrant. As this is a very popular spot for people to visit and jump off these rocks and enjoy the water, I feel that it's only fitting to paint a few figures into the scene. By painting a figure into the scene, it helps add a narrative to the painting and it also gives a sense of scale to the scene. As for someone who hasn't visited this spot, it would be very difficult to judge the scale of these rocks, as especially for someone from the UK, this landscape is completely alien and otherworldly to anything you'd see in England. So by having a figure in the painting, we can imagine ourselves standing in the painting and the scale starts to make sense. I hope you've enjoyed that video of me painting here at the wet beaver crack. Um, I certainly enjoyed it, I enjoyed the swimming as well. So this was my last painting here in America and I would really love to come back here and paint again. But for now this is going to be goodbye to America. So if you enjoyed it please do give it a thumbs up and if you give me a super thanks I'd be really really grateful. So thanks for watching, see you in the next video, back in England.